Good morning. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, Naomi. Hello, uh, lovely to see you. Yeah, really nice to see you. And it's nice to be having conversation because we've both been like getting our little emails from the Labour Party this week. Yes, we have. Gosh, it's crazy, isn't it? So, I know of another Jewish person as well who I'm not sure if I'm allowed to name him yet, so I won't. But three Jews expelled during Hanukkah. Wow. Yeah. Um, well done, UK Labour. Great timing. <laughs> yeah. Did you watch Kiss Dharma's Hanukkah video? I saw that it existed and decided not to. You should watch it. It's just total gaslighting. Like to be doing this to us and be saying it's really great that I'm building relationships with the Jewish community. And it's, yeah, it's kind of sick. But um, kind of sick. Yeah, in a bad way, not in a sick, mm. good way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, yeah, so t- tell me what happened exactly in your case, because obviously it's been very much leaked across multiple media sources. Yes, but we- yeah. fascinating. So I was celebrating my 70th birthday last Thursday, December the 15th. That's my birthday every year on December the 15th. <laughs> and <laughs> so I was having a nice time with friends and I wasn't looking at my emails at all. Uh, but I did occasionally check WhatsApp because, you know, people might have been saying, oh dear, I'm going to be late or whatever. So about... 11 o'clock bit before 11 I saw these panicked whatsapp messages from friends saying hearing these terrible rumors that you're expelled what's going on and I'm saying what 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 are you talking about and it turned out that a certain Lee Harpin who we all know and love now of Jewish News formerly Jewish Chronicle um had been tweeting um that first of all he said and this was about a couple of hours after the email the private email to me was sent. I hadn't seen it. Right. Well, he knew about it. Um, saying hearing of a of a significant labor expulsion. And then an hour later, multiple sources confirm that Naomi Wimborne Idrisi has been expelled from the Labour Party. So I'm thinking, oh, multiple sources confirm, do they? Well, that's interesting because that could only be members of the uh, the GLU, Government's League, yeah. you, you send out our letters, yeah. members of the panel, presumably a three-person NEC panel whose identity I've never, I'm not told, we're never told who's on the panel, are we? Um, or other people in positions to have access to this stuff. So it's a clear data breach. It happens to nearly everybody, but it did seem to be particularly egregious shall we say in the case of an elected NEC member as I am am <laughs> despite what's happened since and I, I don't know whether I want to go into that um you know I'm still an elected NEC rep until my appeal has been heard I would have thought but maybe the rules are different on that and I just think well this is yet another example of of blatant factionalism targeting people on the left and there have been so many you're you're an example of where you've been left hanging on for months and months and months it's scandalous and then there have been these sort of snap decisions like Andrea Egan you know national president of unison yeah just expelled because of some vague link with an organization that the leadership has decided to to proscribe and yeah I do want to make clear to people, though, I do not think that expelling me on my birthday was a wicked plot. I mean, they had, <laughs> I mean, that's going a bit far. They had yeah. a, um, an NEC panel meeting on that day. And I'm sure they may have noticed that it was my birthday and not given a damn, but that's not the same as suggesting that they did it on purpose. So, yeah, they probably uh, didn't even notice. A lot of this stuff yeah. is, they they have the panels. My, my view is they had a whole batch of panels and they're just working through yeah. them now, which is why a lot of letters are going out and that's right yeah I mean I, I think there's a I think we can ascribe a little I mean it's clearly malevolent but it's mm-hmm. not malevolent in that kind of like I want to target you on a particular day no, no. in some ways that kind of goes against it because they actually don't want to see malevolent in that way they want to see like they're, they're fair, doing fair processes they want to see oh what, yes yeah 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 <laughs> yes and, and people might be curious but the fair process in my case was suspending me shortly after I've been elected to the NEC over the summer, the only Jewish candidate elected, um, CLP rep. Um, and I was suspended on the basis of something I'd done over a year bef- a year earlier. And this is very surprising, isn't it? I mean, well, why would you store up this yes. evidence of my having spoken at a meeting, which was online and available to view since September 2021? And suddenly, oh my goodness, it becomes terribly important to administratively suspend me with urgency. 
um, because because what? <laughs> because it was inconvenient to the ruling faction to have someone like me on the NEC. I mean, there really is it's very difficult to find any other interpretation. So I think bias is evident throughout the process. In my case, your case, so many other cases. Yeah, I mean, the timing is always very interesting. In in your case, like, why did they not suspend you before or expel you before? before you had a chance to run? This is the mm -hmm. crucial question, I think. And I think anyone who can't answer that question about why that suspension and exclusion happened to, to block you from joining the NEC, they wanted to beat you democratically. This is what the right always wants to do, is they want yes. to win democratically. Yes. They fail to win democratically some of the time. Some of the time they do mm -hmm. win democratically. Mm -hmm. Usually, true. occasionally with a, a few cheats involved, <laughs> um, minor cheats involved. But often they, they do because they're organized, they have the structure mm. under control, and they yep. like that mechanism. Yeah. They don't like to kind of come out into the open and expose the processes. I think mm. like your case is really interesting because it exposes those processes, because it, it's like when the machine shows a little bit about what it's really doing. Mm. Yes, I think so. Um <laughs> I think well, obviously they they presumably hoped that I wouldn't be elected. And yes. given that there was not unity on the left. They had good reason to think that I probably wouldn't get elected. So it must have been a bit of a shock when, in, despite certain impediments, uh, <laughs> I was elected. So, and that's when the wheels must have started to turn. And of course, there was there was a wildly hysterical public campaign by the Jewish Labour Movement and the Board of Deputies and the Jewish Leadership Council and who else? I can't remember the usual suspects anyway. Yeah saying that this woman must not be permitted to get anywhere near any influence on, on the NEC. It's a shocking setback in the fight against anti-Semitism. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, I guess anti-Semitism is such a weird thing there that it doesn't bear any resemblance to actual anti-Semitism or any relationship to it. This is it, it absolutely yeah. doesn't. It's so bizarre. And what you highlighted in your video about the way they, they constantly try and suggest that what people like us do is hampering their attempts to deal with racism. And first of all, excuse me, what attempts is that exactly, given yeah. the horrendous position of Black and, and Muslim members in the party and how furious and angry those, that those comrades are becoming, quite understandably. Um, and then, you know, what are they doing to actually combat genuine anti-Semitism? I mean, I don't see it. Um, yeah. Don't, so. Indeed. No. Um, so you were saying that despite the impediments, you got elected. So let's just talk about those impediments. Because um, when you were elected, like, the significance of it seemed to me very, very big. Because for a long time, there's been a, a growing split between momentum and the kind of left grassroots. Mm. Uh, and that's kind of manifested around these slates ever since um, they dropped Pete Wilsman in the middle of, of an election yeah. for, for National yeah. Exec. And it's, it's got more, more pronounced, I think, since then. Mm -hmm. And I think this marked the only time, your election marked the only time that someone who didn't have momentum support, mm -hmm. someone who did have momentum support in mm -hmm. an a major internal election yes. within the Labour Party. I thought that was actually both interesting and for me hopeful in mm -hmm. the sense that there was a kind of manifestation of not just a small group of people who felt that momentum wasn't really the strand of the left they wanted, but of a yeah. wider group of people. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about that experience and how that worked and what you think yeah. the significance of it is? I definitely agree with you that there was a lot that was hopeful about that campaign um, because there were 13 organisations that did back a slate which included me. And of course, I wasn't standing in opposition to any amendments and back candidates. We were campaigning for all five. So that was Jess, me, Yasmin, Gemma and Mish. We campaigned for all of them. When I sought endorsements, I explicitly sought endorsement for grassroots five. Uh, but people, it, it sort of really exposed the fact that... <laughs> Momentum was we had decided that it could not tolerate me. Um, they gave all sorts of weird reasons, which I really don't think we should go into because it was very duplicitous and dishonest of them. The way they, the way they pretended that oh, we'd always said there should only be four candidates and, and all sorts of other things that they brought up. Um, so you know there was there was I with the support of twelve other organisations in addition to JBL, all campaigning away 
for this slate of five. And people were aware of the role that momentum was playing. And lots of people deliberately adopted the strategy that the Grassroots Five slate with me on it were adopting and not the strategy that Momentum were adopting. And I mean, I felt sorry for Mish because he was actually a casualty of that. Yeah. Um, um, I'm sure that's why. I, mean, I, I think we could probably have got all five of us elected if we had had Momentum's backing, but there you go. Yeah, so, so now, true. if we could, I'm, I'm we, you know, use the notice that we've recently put out a, um, a statement for people to sign. Yeah. I'm astonished at these signatures that are just flooding in. Lots of them, obviously, from people who have already given up on Labour, unfortunately. But the majority are from people who are still members of the party. Some of them hold positions that they really, I, can, I could well understand if they said, oh, I don't want to risk this position, I'm not going to sign. But they are signing, and I find that very encouraging. Maybe at last people are feeling the need to stand up as you and I've been saying for many, many months, they needed to. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Hope, hope, there are hopeful signs there. Yeah. I mean, we'll put. I'll, I'll put a link in the description below this video to that Great. statement, and um, yeah, try to use this video and other things to kind of promote it. Because, I mean, statements only go so far, but it is useful for people to speak to to put their name to something. I think that's what's really mm -hmm. important because I think a lot of this works through intimidation. Um, yes. So I guess you have the same thing which I've had, which is people will send me private messages sometimes, but not publicly support. Yes. And particularly councillors. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. It. Not to mention MPs, of course. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see where. Uh, I don't get MPs. I'm not quite that. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, we did for Grassroots Five, you see, we got a handful of brave, brave souls. Right. So um, whether they feel able to continue supporting that grassroots movement which sort of uh, got me to yeah <laughs> put my head on a stake and parade it around you know that's but it's interesting C can we go back and look at this question of the um the way the party is using prescription as yes. a way of uh, because what it does is it saves them going through the rigmarole they had to go through with you of actually trying to prove that things you'd said were, you know, undermining the struggle against anti against racism and so on, because they just have to say, well, we've decided X organisations on the left are not compatible with, with Labour Party membership. You once did something that indicated that you think they're that they're not the devil incarnate. Therefore, you are the devil incarnate, and you're out, and we don't have to prove anything. Yes, so that's what they've been doing with so many people, from Ken yes. Loach through Ian Hodson. Andrea Egan, I already mentioned, Pamela, Pamela Fitzpatrick. Um, and in many cases, they've done it retrospectively, which is legally very dodgy, and they must know that. Um, I don't have that defence because they had already proscribed some of, these, some of the organisations in July 2021. And in September 21, I took part in a discussion at Labour Party Conference that year, which had been organised as part of a festival. It's caused a lot of confusion because the festival was called Resist! Exclamation mark. So everybody's saying, oh, right, she was on a, on a Resist platform. Oh, dear, she obviously supports Chris Williamson. I mean, I, I love Chris Williamson, but I've told him over and over again, I think the part he took after his appalling treatment by the party was not, not helpful. So I, I don't support Resist! Yes. Organisation, but that shouldn't stop me taking part in a discussion with the title, bear in mind, of McCarthyism and Starmer's Labour. That was the title. And there were half a dozen people participating. I was not originally billed as a speaker, but because of my involvement with, you know, all the work that JVL's done helping people who've been victims of the McCarthyism in the party. Uh, I was very pleased when they said, would you join in? One of the speakers is a, an, a prominent and eminent professor of media studies who I used to work with at Reuters so I was particularly interested to join that panel um, and then you know a year later it was thrown back at me you are a supporter of Resist, Labour Against the Witch Hunt and Labour in Exile Network because their names were on the the organising group for this whole festival and it's yeah I mean somebody's pointed out to me Wes Streeting goes and speaks at the policy exchange quite a lot there are all sorts of forums, right wing forums, yes. that leading Labour Party people go and speak on with far more 
you know, it would be far more legitimate to suggest that they support the people organising those than there is to suggest that I support the groups involved in yeah. like festivals. I mean, obviously this is nonsense. I mean, mm. this is the thing, isn't it? It's like really yeah. difficult though, because when you start to explain why it's nonsense, mm. it's very difficult to, to do it because kind of give it credibility in some yeah. sense. Oh, That's no. what's so difficult with all this. I mean, proscription is, I mean, I was very lucky with, with my disciplinary case in the sense that it wasn't prescription if it had been I would not have fought it because I would see no point there's I, I, um I didn't want to stay in the party I mean I'm different than you I kind of want yeah to well I kind of feel yeah. I must because people voted yeah. for me and it's... yes you kind of have to yeah I didn't yeah. once it got to November and we'd been through council selections I decided to leave and I stayed because I thought there was kind of some kind of educational value out of mine in the sense mm-hmm. that they had yeah, to make yeah. a decision they had to say do we think that this person should not be a member of the Labour Party because of these statements? Yeah. But prescription, you're right. It kind of, it, it appears to be a fair procedure. You know, here mm-hmm. we are, we set out the rules, you do whatever, you did this thing, it's really bad. But of course, because of the reasons you said, it's not a fair procedure, but it, it allows them to not actually expose the me- mechanics in, in quite mm-hmm. the same detail. It Indeed. allows them to hide certain things. And yes. so it's very, very convenient. It allows them to also to work very, very quickly. They mm-hmm. can get rid of people much faster. Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. 14 days to appeal. And, and nobody ever gets a response to their appeals anyway. Mine, yeah. will go, mine will go to them shortly and I'll make it public. So even if they don't respond to it, at least people will see what, what we've been arguing. I mean, this is the other thing which is kind of interesting is that you're not supposed to make anything about your case public. <laughs> yeah, it's okay to tell me you are, Everywhere, exactly. This yeah. is so, so contradictory that it's yes, against yes. the rule book to, to, to talk public. It's against, there's a code of conduct which specifically states that for the sake of all parties concerned, you know, nothing to do with these disciplinary matters must be made public to the media or to any third parties but it doesn't apply in our case. It's actually in every letter that the GLU sends out as well. There's a little yeah. paragraph in there, isn't there? Saying you must not. And it would be a disciplinary offence to it to, to do that, to share my own case with anybody else it would be a disciplinary offence. But for them to share it with a hostile journalist with a long record of exposing people on the left and attacking people on the left, and getting successfully sued about the way he does it as well yeah. on another occasion. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Fine. So let's talk about what it means for Labour Party then. So, so you're not going to be on the NEC. I'm pretty sure they're going to. They, yeah. They're going to. They've already replaced you. So they've already yes. replaced you because they they have no intention of putting you back on. The same way that they have no intention of letting Jeremy be a candidate at the next election. Yes. So that's very clear. Um. So, what's this mean? I mean. Does it make any difference? Would it make any difference having you on, on the NEC? This is a question, isn't it? Given where we are, what yeah. dif- what analysis do you bring to it? What can you could you have done? Yeah, well, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, the left is in a tiny minority on the NEC now. Um, I mean, even if I was one of them as well, it still would be a handful of trade union reps from the left and the, the four who were, who were on the grassroots five slate. And that's about it, really. Um, I think one or two people sort of wavering in the middle who you might manage to persuade to support some action or other. But OK, let's something really important that the NEC should be doing is yeah. implementing the recommendations of the Ford report that would have made the party more open and democratic and would have tackled the dis- dysfunctional culture and would have looked at um, how we educate people about racism in a in a in a deep and reflective way, which, of course, is not happening now. Um, so I'm, I won't be there to push for, you know, a, a sort of deep analysis of, of those things and to uh, and to make a noise about it. Does it really matter if there's people on, on the NEC making a noise? I think it did for a while when we were actually trying to move, mobilise the movement. Yeah. Um, uh, because it it meant that people could put out like Laura Peacock and Nadia Jama used to make statements and then they would publicise those statements and people outside could see, yeah, you know, there is something to fight for here. But um, now I'm, I'm doubtful as to how significant it is because the party's direction has been chosen. Yeah. It's a sort of neoliberal, pro-imperialist, keeping the world safe for a sort of liberal version of capitalism. That that's their that's their vision. <laughs> um, and anybody who diverts from it 
is liable to be subjected to disciplinary action. I mean, some of the councillors who've been kicked off long lists, and then my short lists, council candidates, just ridiculous people who aren't like you and me, you know, <laughs> but they're dangerous too. I mean, apparently they're dangerous, so they have to, they have to go. So what's the point now? Oh dear, I, I don't know. I mean, really it's just, there are still people in the party who do have faith in that need for a parliamentary road, need to have something to vote for that isn't Tories. Yeah. So I don't want to abandon those people. Um, I would like to think that there are things that we can be doing that work within the Labour Party, but there's such a lot going on that doesn't depend on Labour Party membership. I mean, we could be on picket lines every day of the week. We could yeah. be supporting refugees facing deportation. We could be involved in anti-racist activism and so many other things. So plenty to do, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, my feeling is that right now doing stuff outside the Labour Party is a better use of my time and has been for mm-hmm. quite a while. Mm-hmm. And so I've kind of cut links to the Labour Party for, for a year or so, really. And I've been reducing the time I spent on it for... Some ever since really Jeremy well and we lost in 2019 and kind of um because it takes a lot of energy the Labour Party I mean if you were on the NEC that's an enormous amount of time right but even at local level um because a meeting isn't just a meeting you can say okay this meeting is two hours or it's one day or whatever Mm -hmm. it is but there's a lot of work goes into making that meeting effective sure um and and often more time than the actual meeting takes itself in terms of getting up on the issues, um, trying to bring people on side, being strategic, trying to organise for people to turn out for the meeting, yep, around it. And I'm not convinced about um, the usefulness of that time right now in terms mm-hmm. of late party, but I might be wrong. I might yeah. be completely wrong and maybe, maybe it's necessary. I don't know. Well, I, I know good comrades in my, in my CLP and many others who really devote their entire lives to this sort of thing, to making their branches function, to trying to make the CLP work in the interests of, of the members and, and broadly, you know, society, because we, th- these people are trying to get Labour government elected. Yeah. Um, so, yes, of course, I can see that. But th- this diversion of our energies, this also applies to the anti-Semitism situation, because I Whereas I used to devote my life to constructive work around, you know, Palestine, bringing the attention to, of the public to what's, what's going on in Palestine and, and why Israel needs to be held to account. Now I spend all my time defending people who want to support Palestine against ridiculous charges, mainly, not always, you know, we have to keep saying it, don't we? Of course, there is anti-Semitism in every sector of society. Um, but uh, we, we spend all our time defending each other against charges of anti-Semitism instead of getting on with defending the Palestinians. Interestingly, it's um, the election of fascists in Israel does seem to have made some people think, you know, there's a thing on BBC last night, Radio 4, right. uh, the news at 10, nice little package from um, Tom, I can't remember his name. Anyway, what, their journalist in, uh, in the West Bank talking about the way settlers are being allowed to rampage around destroying Palestinian lives, smashing up family homes and things. I kind of just noticed that, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in what you said. Yeah, the diversion of energy. This is clearly what it's about, right? Mm. And, and the diversion of energy and the, the attempt to divide people up yes. internally. Um, and this is kind of why I, I think we need to keep doing this, because we need to stop or try to stop attempts to divide people. Mm. But it's not working. No. But I do think that is worth putting energy into. Yes, personally. definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I, I think, you know, anything that people like us can do to bring together all the disparate forces progressive forces in society. You know, I don't want to sort of big ourselves up particularly, but you know, we all have our role to play. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I want to be open to working with anybody who'll work with me really. You know? <laughs> it's the opposite of that thing about not wanting to join a club that will have me as a member. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the Labour Party, but in terms of building a broader movement, I want to find areas of agreement with as many people as possible. Yeah. People who understand that our civil liberties are under threat in this country. Freedom of speech is under attack. 
you know, there are people being arrested for, well, these young people getting arrested for um, just stop all demonstrations and so on. It's becoming very draconian and scary. It um, is. Yeah. Where does it all end, you know? The history is not encouraging on this. No, and it's it's kind of global, as you were saying, in Israel, but also India seems to be following the same path yes. as Israel at the yeah. moment. Very Obviously, nice. yeah, I mean, there's there's a kind of strong left in Latin America, but there's strong counter forces, as we can mm, see. Um, yeah, and, and across Europe as well. Yeah, yeah. So, that's right. Yeah, yeah, so we do need to find a way to... We do. But actually, like, work together. And I think one of the things which is really depressing is that people will just not touch people like you and me sometimes mm -hmm. because they mm -hmm. see us as somehow kind of, like you say, dangerous, um, maybe a little bit contaminating. Yeah, well, we're tainted. We're tainted yeah. because we've fallen foul of the Labour Party leadership. Therefore, you know, it's it's risky to be anywhere near us. So it happened first with people like Jackie Walker and Mark Wadsworth. Nobody was allowed to go near them. Chris yeah. Richardson, of course. Um, and yeah, and there are others. So th there's a growing list of people who some people are too frightened to um, publicly be friendly with. Like you said, people will send you nice little private notes, but um, don't want to be yeah. seen speaking in the same room with you or anything like that. So maybe we just need to end by asking people to be a little bit braver. Mm. Um, and like not to abandon yeah, um, yeah. people because if we do that we all lose don't we we just completely lose yes yes I mean we have been saying for a long time that people do need to have to stand up it's all very well to say it's important to stay in the Labour Party therefore we must find ways of working around the rules and around the attacks yeah. but I think we're way past the point where it's acceptable to use that fear as an excuse for not showing solidarity with people who are your comrades because we well as we as we're seeing everybody can become a victim of it it's like the old martin nine thing isn't it about first they came for the socialists and i didn't blah 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 yeah so